What is up guys, welcome back to today's Destiny 2 build, with today's showcase focusing on the combination of elemental wells, warm and cells, and lots and lots of supers being freely available for both you and your team, and the application of such a setup is actually quite fascinating in terms of how simple but powerful the build is, once everything starts flowing. I've seen many endgame well radiance builds be used for all sorts of contents, and I've dabbled in this area as well for team support. But the majority I see and follow are very simple design when you first start out, and don't dive much in the active support role that can be useful in both support and DPS for the user alone. To me, there isn't much worth building around it from just being a simple support build, as we could do a lot more if we put our minds to it. The main pro of these builds is building up to your supers back to back, which is fine, but we can improve this a bit more. With the introduction of Elemental Wells and the Exotic Solar Bow for us to use, I have found that we can effectively be as lethal but even more supportive when not even using our supers all the time and this is very easy to achieve. You'll have the ability to not only create supers one after another like normal and create one myself on the fly but you'll also gain the ability to produce elemental worlds on the go and debuff plus prime targets for your allies to rely on. This can be a very effective setup for a number of contents but for short you're going to want to use this in endgame if the opportunity arrives. Before we head in, if you enjoyed the video, then I would really appreciate a like and a sub as it goes a long way for me. So for subclass, we'll be using the Terminal of Grace as this is considered the one best support based subclass that offers the most to everyone. When you use the subclass, you pretty much set yourself up for a supportive role and this can be done solo or in teams but tends to be more for teams. The subclass role you play is pretty simple as all you need to do is net kills and have your super ready for everyone for when the time comes. And honestly, when you combine it with the Phoenix Protocol Exotic, you become unstoppable. Of course, when your super isn't active, you'll be relying on your subtree perks, and the two that will be coming in handy is the Benevolent Dawn, which will grant you ability energy when you empower or heal your teammates with a rift or grenade, and Guiding Flames that will empower you and your team upon melee hits. These two perks combined with the Elemental Wells will net you a wave of ability energy all the time and thus keep you active in the fight. Elemental Wells will play a strong part in how the build goes, so we must make sure that our abilities are being fully used throughout so they don't go to waste. One thing you'll notice upon using the setup is how quick everything builds up without the need to max your stats out, which for me was a surprise but a welcoming one. For new players, this means that you don't need to rely on certain ability perks from your weapons to see a noticeable change. This also means you have more control as to which weapons from your primary and heavy slot that you wish to use, which is important if you're playing in raids or nightfalls, as specific weapons will do more damage over time. For weapons, because you're going to be using your super a lot for the bonus and damage, and you'll be using the Sundering Glare mod for debuffing enemies, you'll want to have at least two long range to mid range weaponry, and then one close range weapon when closing the gap against certain enemies. My primary will be the Heritage Shotgun with Outlaw and Fresh, and this will act as my close the gap weaponry. Although having a primary weapon with the Wellspring Book can be more advantageous for the moderately fast ability regen, the current rate we have should be suitable enough to sustain the endgame goal in mind, so it's not really that needed. This means the primary slot is free game in whatever weapon or perk is best for you. The shotgun for example is simple but efficient and will net you many kills you'll need to build up your abilities over time through natural play, but also will efficiently build up your super much record time thanks to the fresh perk. Like I said, this might not be the best weapon or role you want to look for, but something along the lines of a heart in primary should do you good. For secondary, I'm using the Tiku's Divination Exotic Bow that was released this season and the bow is the best in terms of overtime damage on a single enemy, while also being the best at clearing enemies and causing a chain reaction. Its track, prime and destiny ability is a very useful tool that can work in many wonders for the build, and this is something I covered quite a while back, seeing as it was still new at the time. And priming a target basically weakens them and allows you to detonate them with any weapon final kill or just from the bow alone. Upon priming a target, we can use our grenades to finish them, which will activate our elemental orders mod and our war mine cells from the AoE explosion. Both of these will greatly benefit you as you're building up kills, but also helping your team out as they can use your elemental wells and war mine cells for their own good. The fact that you can pull this all off with just a bow shows just how much synergy it has with the build in general, and the weapon is viable for endgame 
as well, which makes it that much more powerful in team play content or nightfalls. For Heavy, I've chosen to use the Code Duella Rocket Launcher that has Autoload and Holster, which is perfect for negating his slow reload speed, and Ambitious Assassin which will allow us to hold 2 in a tube if we get 2 plus kills. Another fantastic weapon to have, the Rocket Launcher has proven really useful against bosses and adds with the recent Rocket Launcher buff, and is slowly becoming an option for many PvE players to use as an endgame DPS weapon. I do have a version with the new Lasting Impression perk, but I found that this role is slightly better for the faster DPS you can pull off in a short time frame. It also works alongside my Warman cells and the splash damage should be enough to activate them, while having last and presence mean I need to be accurate with my shots and have less amount of time activating my cells. This will of course vary from player to player. Now the stats, as we're going to be covering all of our abilities via energy regen for the mods and subclass, it will be within your best interest to go ahead and balance this area out, so you don't over bloat your stats, nor have anything too below a preferable threshold. Now this will vary from player to player, and of course you don't need to have the same stats as I do if you don't agree with what I'm aiming for, but this should be useful in terms of creating a template for you to use and then adapt to. Your discipline should be roughly around 60 for a 45 second cooldown, and from here you won't need to invest from here on out, as everything else should filter in and aid you where you need be. With the Elemental Orders mod, you're going to be utilising your grenades to activate said mod and get the ability Improved Regen for 30 seconds, which will also activate the Frontal Wisdom mod for a plus 50 intellect boost to an intellect stat. Now because we aren't using any specific weapon perks to boost our grenade regen much faster, it means that we have to rely on our subclass perks and other mods to achieve significant gain. Having Impact Induction, Innovation, Absolution and Distribution will fare very well with giving you that extra boost alongside the Elemental One mods to naturally have your grenades and abilities up as quickly as possible. As you can tell, these mods are available for all and are not locked behind certain seasons, except for Elemental Wells. Your intellect stat will be the second most important stat to invest in, and for this, this will be linked back to the Font of Wisdom mod, which will provide you a base plus 50 intellect points into your current intellect. Now what this means is that it's adding on to what your current stat is, and will reduce your cooldown accordingly. So with 50 intellect, I currently have a 4 minute 31 second cooldown, but with the mod added now for another plus 50, I will have a 3 minute 48 cooldown, which is still a lot, but do remember, we had to fresh perk on our primary and our exotic chest piece that will be further pushing our regen a lot more faster than shown. Resilience and recovery now will always be important, so it's always recommended to have it at least 50 to 60, and this will allow you to survive an extra hit. The main and only stat I would recommend you invest more in would be the recovery, since it works alongside the Ben 11 Dawn and will help in faster ability regen from here on out. And then lastly, pumping points into strength will allow you to use your Guiding Flame ability a lot more often, which will be further increased thanks to the distribution and absolution mods. A melee of course will empower you on charge hits for 6 seconds, and the boost is wanted when using your heavy or primary. Aiming for 40 to 50 should be fine as we won't be relying on this too much compared to our grenades. Now as I've covered the weapons, subclass and stats, here are the common mods that we're going to be using for the set. For Head, we have Intellect and Frontal Wisdom mod. Arm, we have Resilience, Impact Induction, Overload Bow, and Rafa's Asputum mod. Chest, we have Discipline, Concussive Dampener Times 2, and Elemental Orders mod. Leg, we have Discipline, Absolution, Innovation, and Global Reach mod. Bond, we have Distribution and Sundering Glare mod. The general idea of the build is to provide a great method of crowd control while also providing a large option of supporting your teammates through multiple angles and buffs, and I personally believe we have achieved a good connection with the setup for endgame content where you want to do good damage and also support for team survival. This time around, instead of going with the simple method of heavily relying on the go to warmind mod or charge with light mods, I've decided to mix things up and incorporate multi phase loadout which will utilize our supers but also utilise all of our abilities at once with great care. If we take our subclass, our subclass alongside the Phoenix Protocol will allow us to net more super energy after using our super and getting a kill within it, and pretty much allow us to be mobile healing plus buffer for a team, which is useful for when you're up against a bosses. Before that is achieved, we need to focus on building it up, and our main weapons will play a big part in achieving this but also, utilising the Elemental Well mods such as Ordnance and Wisdom will greatly help in boosting our stats cooldown a lot more faster. 
But then before that, we need to create elemental worlds that will both play a pivotal role in our team support and our stats. And for that, we have these subclass tree perks, which can boost our ability regen as long as your team is afflicted by it, which in your case will be all the time. So now you have your ability options for supporting until your super arrives covered, but then this leaves you with damage, and this of course can be linked back into your weapons, but also the following mods. We are going to be focusing on two key mods, Wrath of Rasputin and this Thunder and Glare mod. And these in action will allow you to create a whole lot of ad clearing options for your team. I've mentioned in the past video before of how powerful Warman cells are, and how you only need a single cell to wipe out an area easily with them. So in terms of providing support, utilizing the Wrath of Rasputin mod, our grenades, and our Tiku Deviation are a perfect combo for activating them and causing a lot of damage continuously. At the same time, using our bow can also activate the Sun and Glare perk for a 20% debuff on an enemy as long as it's done by crits and in multiple successions. As you can see, the build has a lot more life in it when not having a super available, which I believe was a big issue for using such a build in endgame. It still has these simple mechanics to making it work, but it now has a lot more bang out of the package and the customization option allows you to mix and match with other mods. You can swap out one of your War Mind Cells for a mod that provides healing instead, or you can add an ability to produce elemental wells just from your sword weapons alone. Heck, you could just go with elemental wells only mods and you'll still have an effective setup that will serve you well for years to come. Is it worth it? Of course, and no matter what type of player you are, you can mix and match to build to your own level. You don't need to have everything shown, but you do need the gear that synergizes well that a lot of players can achieve over time through long and rigorous playtime. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny and Time for 2 content if you do that type of stuff. Link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next one.